Okay, and just a bit of introduction, Patrick is uh, currently a professor in art studies at the University of the Philippines in Manila, or, or Diliman, mm. actually. Uh, he's also the curator of the Vargas Museum at the university. I've known Patrick for a long time. He has been not only a great mentor, uh, especially in my, under, uh, in, my post, in my PhD studies, mm. but also subsequent to that, He's been a great friend, a great colleague, and uh, when we invited him to speak here at Ilham Gallery for the Ilham Lecture Series, he's also sort of uh, given us a very rich uh, mm -hmm. you know, talk that uh, was the beginning of a conversation between the gallery and Patrick to, uh, 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 to sort of like explore uh, uh, working together the result of which is this current exhibition. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, uh, I also want to point out uh, Rahel Joseph here, who's the gallery director. And if you have any questions about the, the gallery, uh, you may sort of like, you know, ask her more about uh, this interesting space that she's really creating, not just for Malaysian artists, but also uh, for the regional art scene as well. Okay. Yeah. So without further ado, maybe I can you know, pass it over to you, Patrick, yeah. to lead us through this walkthrough. Thank you. So, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Simon, for the... Uh -huh. I'm sorry. If it's okay with both of you. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so naked. <laughs> okay. Silakan. <laughs> okay, thank you, Simon, for the gracious introduction and welcome to everyone to the to the exhibition uh, dream of the day i'm not a very good uh, tour guide but i'll try i'm better i think read than heard but uh, yeah i'll walk you through the exhibition so as simon was saying uh, uh, well he'd like us he'd like me to walk you through the process of exhibition making so uh, it begins of course with an idea and the idea is uh, not only the idea of the curator, but uh, a conversation of the curator with, uh, with a world of ideas, uh, with, the, with discourse in general. Uh, uh, it could be in relation to theory that we read. It could also be in relation to um, artistic material. It could be also in relation to uh, ideas of artists. No? So there's a range of possible sources uh, to which the, uh, with which the curator can be in conversation. And in this particular uh, uh, undertaking or project, I was in conversation with uh, David Medalia, an uh, artist who, uh, a Filipino artist who migrated to Europe and America, specifically to London in the late 60s, and became part of a, uh, a, an early group of contemporary artists in, in, in London. And he was also working with other diasporic artists like Rashid Arain of Pakistan, and uh, were, tried to uh, collectivize, meaning uh, group themselves together in collectives like Artists for Democracy or Signals, which was a publication and also a, a, um, an, a space, and also the transmedia performing group called the Explode, Exploding Galaxy. So in 1965, uh, he, he wrote a manifesto called uh, mm, a Manifesto. Huh? <laughs> so mm, is uh, is open to you know, in interpretation. It could be mm, for what? For Medallia, <laughs> who is the uh, author. And mm, could be the manifesto. You know what a manifesto is? It's a declaration of desire, uh, of uh, intention, or a call to action. No? So uh, mm, it could also be a uh, sign of like dreaming or reverie, right? It could also be the moment before thought. That's when you write, mm, you think, no? And then, <laughs> and then, so the moment before thought is important, no? 
it could be a prelude to thought or it could be another universe altogether. And so that's the space that uh, the artist creates for possibility. Now, so this is really a condition of possibility. The mm and also the uh, project of a manifesto, which is a call for possible action. No? So this is what art does, and this is also what political work does. So in this case, both are present. No? The political work of envisioning change, maybe, or something different, and also the crafting, which is the crafting, literary crafting, the writing of manifesto is in itself uh, artistic, right? And uh, uh, the manifesto is in relation to a body of work, of, of medallia. So the, it's not only a manifesto writer. He was a, a performance artist. He did installation, sculpture. And in relation to sculpture, which is the main point of the manifesto, he did the auto-creative sculpture in the 60s, like the bubble machine, which was very famous. So it's a simple invention, a, a machine that produced bubbles, and there was constant uh, production of bubbles. Now, it was ephemeral. Bubbles are ephemeral, right? They, uh, so uh, beautiful work. So the idea of auto-creation is also important in my thinking mm. of, uh, of the condition of possibility. You create uh, from something, no? Mm. And uh, so it is about sculpture and, well, anyway, you can, uh, it's almost impossible because he dreams of the day uh, that uh, sculptures can breathe or perspire or laugh or yawn. No? So, so how is the manifesto connected to the idea of dream of since the, the word dream is mentioned quite a few times? Yeah, yeah. So the dream of the day, uh, I, I lift the, the first, uh, this phrase, no? the dream of the day from the manifesto and make it the, turn it into the title of of the uh, exhibition. I don't like themes in my exhibitions, so I, 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 I favor um, procedure. Yeah? I favor procedure or process rather than theme, like let us say climate change or uh, what, uh, what other theme you have. So dream of the day is, uh, has two levels for me. Dream of the day is the what you're dreaming today is the aspiration of the moment. Mm -hmm. no? But if you shift the mood to Im the imperative mood, like dream of the day, you're, you're being commanded, right? It's like command. You dream of the day, right? It, it, there's a shift in, I think in mood, no? in, mm -hmm. in, in the grammar, grammatical system. So it's a call to action. You dream of the day when things are different, for instance, mm -hmm. in the same way that uh, uh, Medalia is dreaming of that day. So, so the first um, moment is a, a, uh, a the present project of thinking of change, no? of dreaming something. And second is a call for future action. So those two are present in 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 medallias, uh, mm. medallias work. So the social, this is I, I see it in relation to uh, uh, Al Manrique's work, Filipino artist working in the 70s and 80s in in the Philippines, and he was part of a movement, a stylistic and political movement called social realism in, in the Philippines, in which the artists were uh, uh, struggling with. Uh, with an authoritarian government. So they, uh, in many of their paintings, they depicted the conditions of oppression, of uh, repression of rights, uh, social problems, and so on and so forth. So he was one of that, one of the artists of the movement. But uh, according to him, he told me that this is his most radical work, most politically maybe progressive work, because here we see the moment when the barbed wires are already cut off and the, the, bar, the, board, the boundary or the limits are breached so that uh, the, the, the person or 
to represent maybe the people could already uh, move into a new condition or a new land or a new day. No? So this is in the moment of, of freedom no? for, for, for Manrique. So the, there is critique, criticism of uh, social condition, but it's at the same time an anticipation of that day when things are, are different. So th these are the, 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 the two impulses in the, in the exhibition. Which, and uh, they, they converse quite uh, nicely with uh, Sharon Chin's work here, uh, which, is, uh, from, which is an extension of that, actually, the main area. Uh, so this is a, uh, a Wayang uh, shadow play. Uh, uh, that uh, consists of uh, uh, materials from a protest that uh, Sharon did no, in relation to the presence of the oil refinery uh, in, in Port Dixon. No? Mm -hmm. So these are animals that uh, in Port Dixon that uh, could be threatened by the climate crisis uh, that can be partly traced to the oil refinery. So the light that illuminates the condition of possibility of the art is also the problem. No? So you, you see the, the relationship between, let us say, the object of critique and also the subjectivity of the material, right? So yeah. Perhaps it is easier so to, to, look <coughs> to see it from here so, so that so, there is a... Okay. Uh, so maybe you can ask now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> So the, I think it is easier to sort of see it from this yeah, image yeah, yeah, itself, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Just now when Patrick was uh, talking about the oil refinery, mm -hmm. it is much more clearly see. shown over here. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is part of a, 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 a seaside town in Malaysia mm. where they have an oil refinery there and it has caused a lot of ecological or environmental mm. damage to the town itself. Uh, resulting in a lot of wildlife species being threatened, threatened including yeah. bats, figures like the bats, mm -hmm. as well as other sort of mm -hmm. uh, smaller animals. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Go on. Yeah. So uh, those, I think, those three will. Uh, uh, I think the the three works in. So that is what curation does too, mm -hmm. right? So there's an idea, my idea, but not only mine because I was in conversation with. Medallia. And Medallia belongs to a different time, right? So the idea is centered on the dream and the possibility yeah, of yeah, change? Yeah, of change, yeah. Okay. So uh, the, yeah, the uh, possibility of change, right? The project of change, because art is a project. And uh, uh, we, we work towards change. But uh, in, before we do that, or as we try to reflect on it, we also reflect on what needs to be changed, no? What needs to be changed? So if there's something wrong with the world, so what is the condition of the world? So we are drawn to the condition of reality, of reality. So what is reality in the first place? And uh, with that, we, we work towards the possibility of changing it. So the idea of reality is important in, in this exhibition and how it can be subjected to different interpretations. No? So uh, one part of this is uh, art history, mm -hmm. uh, which has something to do with surrealism. No? Because surrealism uh, complicates the relationship between dream and like uh, consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. uh, being conscious and being unconscious. No? So that's one strain, uh, the surrealist uh, philosophy which was also uh, explained in I think three manifestos mm -hmm. beginning in the, I think 29 after the first world war no? so it's a, a movement that came after mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. the war but that's only one strain and uh, the art historical level or layer it's it doesn't dominate the the exhibition but uh, in, 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 in responding to that, we, have, we, we also include in the exhibition some works, modernist works in Southeast Asia, 
in the uh, maybe from the 50s uh, to the 80s that are in conversation with uh, surrealism. I'm not saying they are surrealist works, no? Mm -hmm. uh, but definitely they were in conversation with a global stylistic movement called surrealism, or they were in conversation with other sources independent of surrealism, like let us say mysticism, mm -hmm. or it could be a folklore, mm -hmm. right? or it could be everyday life that is, uh, cannot be explained by, uh, let us say, rational thought. No. So uh, that is one strain, and we see that maybe we can move to that uh, okay. part, yeah. This gallery. Yeah, this gallery, yeah. And then, and then that, OK. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we, I uh, was, a, I'm including in this, this gallery some modernist works from Thailand, for instance. So you see uh, uh, works that may be arising from an unconscious, or I mean images from the unconscious, or dreams, or uh, juxtaposition of. Uh, let us say incongruent, incongruent elements, mm. or uh, interface between uh, the species, no? like human and uh, plants. In this, in this case, for instance, um, yeah. And part of the surrealistic uh, impulse is to to subject the image to experimentation, no? and uh, we we can reference this through photography, no. In uh, Sri Lanka, to the work of Lionel Wendt, so you have this uh, the, the the body subjected to experimentation, uh, or, or Van Leo in Egypt, and Jess Aiko there uh, from from the Philippines. Uh, a more direct uh, relationship could be with psychology could be seen in the work of Alfonso Osorio who was uh, uh, born in the Philippines but migrated to the U.S. and became a well-known uh, collector of uh, Jackson Pollock and Jean de Buffet, and later became, of course, an important abstract expressionist himself. No? So in the 50s, he was in one of the islands in the Philippines uh, painting a mural for a church uh, in the daytime. In the night time, he was furiously drawing uh, these images of, of the child, no? like some kind of a primitive moment. He was uh, in conversation with uh, Nandor Fodor, a psychologist who uh, theorized on uh, the trauma of birth and also of uh, prenatal conditioning. Now, I also don't understand it that much. No? But uh, there was that, uh, uh, he, he was uh, extremely uh, intelligent, uh, Alfonso Osorio, very well educated, and also very wealthy. Yeah? Their family uh, owned the sugar plantation mm. in, in, in Negros, it's the island, what the island was called. So yeah, so this uh, this this uh, wow. room uh, of this oh. both, yeah, this is a bit the, the, we see like surrealism broadly conceived. No, I'm not tying it down to surrealism, but this is a problem of art history. No, mm -hmm. uh, recently the Metropolitan Museum in New York did uh, did a show called Global Surrealism. No? something a, mm. a global a surrealism in a global frame and stuck to that period of the 20s maybe to the 40s no mm -hmm. so they didn't really go beyond no? so mm -hmm. i was telling them why not maybe it's osorio or other mm -hmm. said, no we're sticking to the period the period, yeah. but uh, well i still wrote on osorio yeah because i think osorio was important so they they allowed it uh, i said it's quite direct it's psychology but because they, they had some markers for surrealism, yeah? mm. like, like it should be 
in relationship with maybe the unconscious or the uncanny, meaning the repetition of image, dream, uh, objects. I mean, the, the, it's a psycho psychoanalytic uh, framework. No? Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, mm -hmm. so, but here I'm broadly conceiving surrealism as, uh, let us say, uh, it's an intellectual atmosphere. Uh, to which uh, some artists in Southeast Asia were uh, in conversation with, like uh, like these people, no? or maybe Egypt. Uh, and then maybe a note on the, the geography of the exhibition, it's largely Southeast Asia. No? The, that is the one of the, maybe the limits of the exhibition. But I try to extend uh, the region as well, no? uh, to complicate it a bit, that it's not just this geopolitical group uh, formalized by the ASEAN in, mm -hmm. in, in 67, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, so I'm including uh, artists from, let us say, Sri Lanka, which is not really uh, acknowledged as part of the region, but I think it's, it's connected to the region by, uh, let us say, the Indian Ocean, mm -hmm. no? as well as Egypt, no? uh, which connects us to. So this, I, anyway, the, the regions are uh, artificially produced no? by, by by geopolitics. So I think uh, curatorship can complicate those, uh, uh, you know, those artificialities. No? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what also what curation should do, or what art history should do, you know, to, to, to complicate uh, 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 the construction of, let us say, the region or the nation state. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure Simon has taught you that. So, uh, so this is it. And there's also an extension of surrealism into other forms, like even in Western art history, it is acknowledged that surrealism was, in fact, influential in abstract expressionism, mm. uh, which uh, Osorio was part of uh, as collector and also as practitioner. Mm. Uh, he was a good friend of Pollock and a collector of early Pollock and also did his own uh, abstract expressionism through assemblage. Mm. But it's not represented here, but that work is also uh, amazing. No? Mm. And it could also extend to informal, maybe through, let us say, the work of uh, of Manuel Ocampo in the, I think the 2000, art, art informal, that kind of painting uh, that uh, you can say informal that's mixed with, with postmodern post -modern painting. Uh, but here it's important to note that uh, he makes reference to Goya's, mm. Goya's uh, famous print uh, titled uh, The Sleep of Reason. Produces, uh, produces uh, nightmares, nightmares yeah. mm -hmm. or monsters, Monst or what, uh, what, uh, monsters, monsters yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the sleep of, <laughs> the sleep <laughs> of reason uh, produces uh, monsters. Uh -huh. So you have owls and then bats, which I think uh, uh, also converse well with the, the uh, menagerie of, uh, the Wayang menagerie of, uh, Sharon, of Sharon Chin. And then la and the last thing, the, the video is from Gatot Prakosa, an early experimental video artist from Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So we'll just show, showing you uh, 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 experimentation in the region mm -hmm. that might be traced to surrealism, but not directly, mm -hmm. or could be in conversation with some of the, uh, some of the uh, concerns of... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the surrealist movement uh, mm -hmm. elsewhere. No? So even if they were not in direct conversation, uh, art history or curatorship can constellate them mm -hmm. as, as belonging to a uh, discursive field. No? And this is what is happening here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah. So uh, maybe I, one, one question that yeah, I, sure. I, I, I have is, um, when you're putting together the exhibition, mm. um, is, do you sort of like have a, an ideal sort of like narrative flow for the exhibition? Mm. Are you sectioning the different mm. space mm. into mm. maybe specific issues that you mm. want mm. us to think about? Mm. Or mm. Um, 
how does the juxtaposition work? You spoke, speak yeah. about juxtaposition mm. as when you have an idea mm. and you bring different things together so mm. that it complicates our understanding of mm. the idea itself, mm. right? Uh, do you do that in every single room, each, each room mm. representing mm. maybe an idea that then gets complicated by, with the showing of different works or, mm. Mm. or is the entire exhibition, you know, Mm. centered on one idea uh, how does yeah. it work yeah of course it's centered it moves around uh, core ideas mm -hmm. and, but uh, they are fleshed out or inflected or articulated in different ways uh, across the exhibition so in my mind in this exhibition there are like 10 zones no, 10 zones in my mind uh, i do not show the zoning here mm, no. very clearly. yeah very but sure. i can do it too i mean in, in some museums would have like right like color the walls or color the walls or have section text that this is zone one and it talks about let us say the theme could be around surreal surrealism mm. but for instance around surrealism yeah so that could be one uh, zone, yeah. and then there's like a section text, and then the, the, the viewer would be led to uh, some kind of framing that this particular zone uh, speaks to these concerns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't do it here. Uh, I had that zones given to, I gave those zones to Ilham for internal guidance, and they, they can also use it for touring and they can also share it with the audience through a QR code or maybe th in the in the website no? so uh, so you can do that yeah if you want to make sure they get it right mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or uh, but I also as curator uh, create uh, some kind of space spatial logic, mm -hmm. uh, some kind of spatial logic so that the body responds to the zone uh, instinctively. Mm -hmm. Like if you're here and then, so, so that's the instinct, that this is the zone, right? And then when it moves elsewhere, then it creates a zone, another one. So I, I have more trust in the viewer that way mm -hmm. uh, to, for, for the body of the viewer to to respond to the space and the body becomes, you know, it's the one, is the body will in a way create that condition, mm. yeah, mm -hmm. instead of the body being directed. Mm. But I understand museum education has to direct, yeah, so it's a curatorial call, mm -hmm. yeah. So if I were, let well, us say, in maybe. NGS, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Singapore. Uh, Singapore uh. being Singapore, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they will direct you. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but I noticed that you, the new hang in uh, at MoMA in New York, no more texts. Okay. Yeah, uh, minimal. Minimal, okay. And a bit uh, intriguing texts, okay. not uh, didactic texts. Mm. Yeah, more evocative, more poetic. Yeah, that's also what I want. Uh, to cr just create a climate, not to really teach no? or the, the, the viewer what to think, but just to create a, a climate, just to evoke some uh, thoughts, no? mm -hmm. but not really to say this is what it's about. Yeah. No? Because once you do that, then you... You hijack the experience. But I also understand that contemporary art is difficult. And in fact, once, that's one of the characteristics of contemporary art, mm. that it's difficult, no? or that it delays uh, easy recognition. No? So, and some people might need help mm. yeah, in uh, negotiating that difficulty. So maybe there can be a... A balance. So I don't really want to use that word. Or some kind of uh, uh, 
maybe back and forth mm -hmm. no? between education, that kind of education and uh, you know, freedom to explore. Uh, because, uh, well, the, the exhibition is about also play and imagination. So I also didn't want that mm, kind of, uh, yeah, yeah, that kind of pedagogy to be in place okay. because uh, it, 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 the material resists it. No? Mm. Yeah, the material uh, resists that kind of pedagogy. But maybe for some exhibitions, uh, that would work. Mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. Maybe if it's a strictly monographic yep. or something. No? Uh, exhibition on one artist or a survey of, uh, of art of one nation state. Yeah, that might work. No? The sectioning that is strict. Mm -hmm. But for, uh, uh, for an exhibition on dreaming, yeah, <laughs> yeah that might uh, be not so productive yeah i want to take this opportunity <laughs> to also maybe open up to the floor if there are any questions oh, yeah, yeah, for yeah, please, patrick yeah. uh, do share them yeah now is the time now now is a good time to ask any questions that you have yeah, so that we are not yeah that's so that it's not just one, one, to, one way yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah on a very like practical sure, note, sure. so a lot I noticed that a lot of the works are borrowed or from private collections or from, mm -hmm. from foundations. Mm -hmm. I was wondering whether you could speak to the origins of like sourcing the work. Uh, sourcing the works because some works are modernist, mm -hmm. so they are I mean they are usually collected already mm -hmm. by collectors and by institutions. So we reached out to them. And they were you know, generous enough to share. Not all collections, uh, you know, lend no? mm -hmm. uh, easily, but we're happy that many of them did. Uh, but for the contemporary art, uh, we, we directly uh, reached out to artists yeah? to, to, to share work from their own collection, or did they also did new work for, for some of them, I think. Yeah, uh, Orawan from Thailand and Sharon uh, did uh, new work for, 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 for okay. this exhibition. Okay. So in, uh, or at Alan Balisi too from, from, from the Philippines. So a few, a few, a few. Of course, a larger exhibition would maybe want more commissions, right? Mm. Uh, but uh, it depends also on the time and resources, yeah. But... Uh, yeah, it's always important, I think, to mix. Yeah, but for me, because I'm a trained art historian, so uh, I always uh, inscribe art history with even within contemporary mm -hmm. exhibitions, even in the Biennale in Singapore or in the Philippine Pavilion in Venice in 2015. So there's like, that art historical moment always, yeah. but uh, because I engage with contemporary art, then my art history, my, the, my methods also change mm. as an art historian. So I, uh, I benefit from that uh, conversation, conversation between, between, uh, between contemporary history. art and art history, between art historical analysis mm. and curatorial thinking. Mm. So I, I encourage uh, the future art historians to to curate. No? Can I can I can mm. you say more about the difference between mm. a curatorial thinking process mm. versus an art historical one, just mm. so that maybe all of us can understand what yeah, are the artist, two different uh, ways of you know yeah. proceeding and thinking about art. Yeah, yeah art historical thinking, uh, art historical analysis is well proceeds from. Uh, the protocols of the discipline. No? Mm -hmm. So, and one of, I think the most maybe enduring method. Yeah, method is this linear, you know, linear chronological, chronological uh, yeah. time based, uh, yeah. time based uh, progressive in a way, uh, movement of works from period. X maybe to period Y and so on and so forth. So there's uh, linearity inscribed in the methodology. Mm -hmm. But I'm also oversimplifying this because art history as a discipline is also not static. No? It is uh, constantly uh, critiquing itself. 
So there are already uh, intense uh, transformations internally no? uh, in the discipline. And also as art history is practiced away from the Euro-American model, then it also significantly changes. But of course, there are habits, no? Mm. Uh, and one of the habits is this linear uh, sequencing of works. Uh, also, the uh, maybe overinvestment in the object sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, and then uh, uh, retrospection, meaning uh, going back to the past and uh, uh, accumulating density of material before it can be before the, uh, the, the 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 material can be let us say written about or mm -hmm. remarked on or, or published so mm -hmm. this like uh, the depth of heritage no? of right. the material so but but curatorial thinking i think is is freer is is unburdened by that mm -hmm. protocol i mean in terms of uh, let us say linearity mm -hmm. uh, the, the, it can you know move uh, more freely or more briskly between time zones mm -hmm. right that's one that's one important idea second uh, the constellative uh, impulse that you can you know uh, juxtapose object, maybe ethnographic object with painting and yeah, with uh, video and so on and so forth. So that usually doesn't happen in art history or at least not yet. Mm -hmm. So if uh, in yeah. an art history, historical type of exhibition, let's mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. then uh, you would have this room maybe filled with only uh, maybe more surrealistic work from mm. say the 1940s and 1950s and you would then sort of maybe build a sense of progression mm. according to time, right? So Correct. this room from the 1950s, the second room is from 1960s to 70s mm. and then you need to mm. gather all the materials that are similar to a particular time period mm. to, to make an argument. Correct. Uh, yeah. Yeah? And it's very strictly, uh, mm. I guess, focused on that time period itself on some level. Mm. Of course, this is slowly changing. Of course, yeah. But uh, mm -hmm. it's changing also maybe there is new conversations in perhaps a curatorial process mm -hmm. where we're able to sort of like put uh, objects or artworks from different time periods mm. together alongside perhaps also with ethnographic films mm -hmm. or other types of like artifacts or objects that historically would not be considered as art. Work, artwork right? or as uh, belonging to the belonging period. To, yeah, belonging to the period. period so you're yeah. mixing up time period, you're mixing up between high art and visual culture or Correct. everyday objects yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. to make a statement. Yeah, that's higher risk. I think that's higher risk, right? I mean, you take a, a lot of risks in that, in the curatorial constellation because the, the framework is not produced uh, at the outset, right? Mm -hmm. and like you assemble a plane in mid-air, mm -hmm. so, so to speak. Yeah, mm -hmm. Because you create the condition mm -hmm. of uh, relationality. In art history, more or less, the template is there. No? Mm -hmm. You just have to maybe fill out some gaps, right? Or elaborate internally or mm -hmm. something like that. No? But uh, yeah, it's a world-making exercise too. Uh, uh, curatorship, not only an affirmation of uh, the discipline, like art history. Mm -hmm. But having said that, I also begin with art historical material. Because medallia, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, is in a way art historical. But this is, but it's he is complicated because he is. Uh, the entry point into uh, contemporary art exhibition. Mm -hmm. So he also cannot be reduced to just, oh, he's just he's historical, finished already, mm -hmm. right? Because in fact, he activates uh, the imagination of a, a new constellation. Mm -hmm. But in relation to uh, Manrique, mm -hmm. that, that juxtaposition is also 
uh, art historical because usually the two are not combined. Right, that conceptualism on the one hand and social realism are like of two different, uh, let us say, traditions mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. or trajectories. No? But here, the art historian can make the argument, but actually if we bring them together, we'll have a better art history, mm -hmm. right? We'll have a better art history because the two uh, uh, inflect or articulate the political in different ways mm. yeah yeah so i'm sure you know i'm sure because uh, si simon has written on the idea of the political right mm. uh, and social realism is more or less the most uh, in a way in a way legible no mm. yeah legible moment of of the political uh, political art but we can see that in, maybe we can go back yeah. there to okay um, yeah, show them the juxtaposition again, just to drive home the point that mm. they're making, and then yeah, uh, and maybe we, we can conclude. Maybe then conclude then can, the other, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, here, I think this is. Yeah. Right, thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> here. So, so here, yeah. So okay. <laughs> thank you. So we return once again. Yeah, yeah. To you know our point of beginning. Mm -hmm. Because like in a dream, everything is circular. Yeah. Right? We it come can, back. It can and return, yeah. It can, okay. So Patrick, uh, <laughs> I wonder if you mind, uh, you know, sharing your concluding thoughts, mm -hmm. bringing together a manifesto that is centered on dream, dreaming, perhaps also more surrealistic or beyond dimensions that are beyond the real mm -hmm. and connecting it to a type of painting style that is committed to depicting in some ways, the real political struggles yeah. of this world, right? S especially because there's a realism, mm -hmm. like realism in social realism, right? So and then, not, normally in art history, mm -hmm. we see this as two separate uh, yeah. tendencies yeah. or approaches to art. One mm -hmm. is about dreaming, about beyond the, the world beyond the real. Correct. And then on one side is about a commitment to capturing yeah what is happening here in our physical world. Yeah. So, so curatorial thinking brings them together, together into yeah. conversation. Yeah, that, they say that dreaming has nothing to do with reality because it's imagined, right? Maybe or fictive or not of this world, otherworldly. But it should also be otherworldly because change is, should you know, create another world. Uh, and social realism is of this world, uh, depicting in uh, al almost also naturalistically the details of the current condition and what is wrong with it. So all the oppression, all the repression, all the ills of society we see in social realism. But here we see uh, uh, it may be another the 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 movement forward after the critique no? of, of of society or of, of the world and this anticipation of a new world but of course it depicted in in different ways uh, also through in the case of uh, manrique through the language of social realism so you still see uh, the depiction of, let us say, the person to represent the common, you know, the common people, and also the landscape, uh, which anticipates a dawn, for instance, or a new morning. But the dip, also the representation or signification of the yeah, the oh. instrument uh, of oppression or uh, the index of the limit, which is the fence, the barbed wire, which might signify, signify property, right? That is denied the person, uh, which would also lead you to class relations, right? Relations of class and mm. so on and so forth. But this is already breached here. No? So, but the breaching is seen, but also what is breached is also represented realistically. No? So we, we see the utopian moment 
also not all, only utopia, maybe the materialization of the project of change is already here. And here we see uh, an impossibility, no? Of, I mean, you know, is it, I mean, you think, no? Uh, uh, can sculptures breathe or can they walk or crawl? But uh, by simply expressing it, uh, Medallia creates that uh, prospect. No? In fact, uh, his sculptures in his body of work would already fulfill the promise to some extent of uh, the manifesto because he did auto-creative sculpture. Mm -hmm. He did bubble machine, he did uh, mud machine, he did sand machine, he did lots of machines. No? Uh, these are kinetic sculptures, he called them auto-creative sculpture. And uh, mm -hmm. so in a way, the manifesto is not something that you know floats in abstraction or something that is impossible, but uh, one that is anticipated and could be fulfilled uh, in, in the work of the artist himself or in the work of those who encounter the, the manifesto and uh, would be touched by, by it. And the other, I think, maybe this, just to conclude uh, this tour, uh, this the idea of the dream that the idea of dreaming is is part of everyday reality, and this is what happens in Sharon Chin's work because uh, the protest is part of everyday life. Ecology is everyday life, right? So it's not. Uh, totally estranged from us, uh, although the artist would bring our attention to things that maybe we take for granted. And also the work of Orawan here. Orawan is a Thai artist uh, uh, who, who, who moves between Berlin and uh, Bangkok. So he, she maps out her world through objects, right? And objects are important in surrealistic framework. No? Uh, fetish, right? Fetish or commodification. Uh, yeah. So she maps out, she maps the, the, those cosmopolitan worlds out through objects that he f she finds in stores, ordinary uh, stores, thrift shops, souvenir shops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this would create a, uh, in a way, a sense of wonder for 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 these objects and also would uh, uh, imagine the world no? so this is everyday life mm. yeah that is uh, configured as dream like in the in the work of 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 of, of orawan and uh, surrealism so i'd like to end uh, through two works of women artists. No? Uh, one from um, the Philippines, who, Nena Sagil, who was in Paris for uh, four decades. And he did, she did uh, cosmic landscapes no? in, using ink, no? India ink, very like uh, creating worlds. No? And if you look closely, I invite you to look closely. It's so like he would, she would, I think, do it almost in a meditative fashion. Mm -hmm. no? So like almost in trance-like uh, condition or state. No? So the, maybe the surrealistic, uh, she was influenced by Kandinsky, the idea of the spiritual in art. So that kind of spirituality would extend to abstraction in the work of, Nina of Nena Sagil on your left, right? Uh, also, the idea of the migrant is important in the movement, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, because Medallia was a migrant too. Mm -hmm. So I think that dreaming also leads us to movement, right? Uh, uh, from state to state, condition to condition, place to place. So there's this movement and you will see more in the exhibition as you uh, move around on your own. And then the work of Murni, 
from Bali, self-taught, uh, came from humble origins, also worked as a domestic worker, mm -hmm. and became a uh, very important artist, uh, not only in, in the context of women's art in, in the region, but the entire art history of uh, Indonesia and also of Southeast Asia. So we see, let us say, surrealistic tendencies, uh, if you would like to characterize them, um, uh, seen through her view of sexuality, uh, that those tendencies extending to, to a potential feminist painting. No? So I think this is the afterlife of uh, surrealism, if you'd like to frame it that way, uh, some kind of abstraction and uh, feminist painting. Yeah. So the, the rest of the, the, rest of the uh, exhibition would simply uh, uh, articulate those ideas. No? Uh, there are parts that show outer space, uh, supernatural, natural or paranormal uh, images, mm -hmm. and then you also have uh, uh, some uh, uh, expressions of queerness of, or the transgender, no? which uh, they all reimagine, for instance, how the body uh, uh, should, you know, should be produced in a different cosmology, but mm -hmm. always through uh, an engagement with uh, history, yeah, mm -hmm. with mythology, and uh, yeah, with uh, everyday life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, so, Patrick. Thank you I think it's coming. very nice mm -hmm. that you have concluded uh, mm -hmm. your tour with a close reading of how two bodies of work relate to one another, mm -hmm. one from uh, a Filipino who is a mm -hmm. migrant who are ultimately settled down in Paris yeah. uh, mm. and then Indonesian Balinese mm. artists and both working in very two different periods in very different style but yet their works are able to be in conversation and if there's something that I've learned from mm. uh, your talk today it is that if as we are going through the exhibition each individual work is not here on its own mm. Uh, mm. but we should be looking at the work and considering the work in relation to other works yeah, around yeah. it to draw out the relationship, mm. the rich associations and the relationship so that we are able to sort of better understand some of the issues and the themes and the ideas and the processes mm. uh, that this uh, show is uh, perhaps uh, uh, sharing with us, right? Uh, the idea of what is real, mm. but also the possibility of how this reality can be changed. changed. Yeah, yeah. And also, uh, we also have to create a space that, uh, to, I mean, uh, some kind of a humble reminder that the real uh, sometimes cannot be represented. No? That the real can sometimes cannot be represented. No, and the psychoanalysis, yeah, yeah. it is horror. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so it's not that it's always representable, right? Mm. So there are limits to this, uh, and the artist can only aspire to maybe glimpses or yeah, to to to, to the real. Uh, yeah, for instance, Moby Dick, no, that monstrous whale in the illustration of Alex Nino over there, a Filipino artist who went to DC Comics in the seventies. He, of course, with his skill, he could represent the monstrosity of Moby Dick, right? But he doesn't do it. It's just uh, like if you look at, because it's there, the, the, the Moby Dick illustration, it's like a silhouette of, of the whale or just, uh, yeah. So he, he, at that point, I realized that, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sometimes you can only hint. Yeah, hint at the, at the real, yeah, because of its impossibility. But the politics is to stay with the impossibility, yeah. Uh, I think that is enough, yeah. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any, any questions before oh, yeah. we, yeah, uh, sure. you know, <laughs> let everyone off uh, to do your own exploration? Are there any, any questions for Patrick? No. 
Okay. I yes, Azad. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. So you you uh, gather a lot of different artists here. Mm -hmm. Is there some of a paradigm that represented this exhibition, particularly uh, uh, specifically uh, talking about the region itself? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In the sense of and the region. Yeah, the region mm. in the sense of the movement of art or artistic practice, even a way of thinking. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I also conceive Southeast Asia in the diasporic sense. No? So it's not just in the region. So you you have artists moving around. So maybe that's that could be one thing to consider, the migrancy as an important element in uh, characterizing Southeast Asian art history. Uh, oftentimes, we're too concerned with the, uh, the local geography. No? Uh, uh, we're, I think we should be more comparative in our approach. But if we cannot do that, at least we acknowledge uh, migrancy within the locality that there are artists from the nation state who had moved beyond the nation state but continue to be in conversation with, uh, uh, let's say, national issues. So Nena or, or David no, would, mm -hmm. would do that. That's one, I think, uh, thing to consider. And second, uh, folklore. I think folklore is uh, something to revisit. Uh, with a different methodology. Now, mysticism, folklore, animism in relation to ecological critique, I think, can be uh, very strong in, in Southeast, Asian, uh, uh, Southeast Asian sensorium. Yeah? Uh, it also lead you to uh, idea of popular culture or commodification, which we can see in the work of Apichat Pong mm. uh, in the forest. So yeah, that, that. and then finally, uh, Club Ate, that the group of transgender, uh, trans artists, uh, duo, who, who talks of uh, future folklore, the idea of a future folklore. I think that idea is interesting to pursue. Yeah, and that didn't, come from me, that came from artistic material. So this is what I'm saying, no? that mm -hmm. art history can be shaped by artistic material, no? that it should not only explain away artistic material, but it should also be allow itself mm -hmm. to be shaped by artistic material. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Any Thank other you. questions? Uh, before we wrap up and send you off to explore, yeah, please on your explore. Own. I let that the curator be the yeah, yeah. the final word on this. But I <laughs> hope that you know the the, the introduction given by Patrick. <coughs> Sorry, post call me. That's Sorry, the can sculpture I... that can cuff. <coughs> yeah, and oh can perspire. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Once I start, I cannot stop. So, okay, I think I've <laughs> ended already. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, thank you all for coming. And please enjoy the show. Okay? Thank you.